Oranges, written and illustrated by Wilfred Edward Cooper. In an old, small western town called El Naranja lived oranges. Oranges live a modest, humble life. It was a peaceful little place that was until a big, rotten tomato named Big Red came riding into town. He was a blacksmith by trade, and after scaring off the old blacksmith out of town, Big Red quickly took over the blacksmith's shop at the edge of town. There were only four oranges that lived in El Naranja. The baker and general store owner named Orange Peel and his wife, Mrs. Carpels Peel. The mayor, whose name was Rhine, who loved to wear a top hat, and Sheriff Albedo. Mrs. Carpels Peel baked a large pie and walked it over to Big Red as a nice way of welcoming Big Red to their town. She, was, she politely introduced herself and handed Big Red the pie. Big Red smiled, took the pie, and threw it on the ground. He told Mrs. Carpels Peel he did not want her pie and just wanted to be left alone. Big Red was not a very pleasant fellow. He was, in fact, downright ornery. Later that day, Sheriff Albedo walked over to the blacksmith shop, introduced himself, and asked if Big Red needed any help. Big Red kicked him and chased him away. Around an hour later, Mayor Ryan stopped to welcome Big Red into town and told him if he had any banking needs, his bank was the safest place to store his money. While Mayor Ryan was still talking, Big Red took Mayor Ryan and dunked him in the horse draft upside down. Mayor Ryan climbed out of the draft and went home to dry off. The following morning, Orange Peel brought Big Red some fresh jerky he and his wife had made in their bakery and offered it free to Big Red. Big Red took Orange Peel and tied him to a fence post outside the blacksmith's shop and shouted out into the town. This is what's going to happen to everyone else who tries to talk to me again. Big Red then continued to work inside his blacksmith's shop. Big Red had the whole town so afraid of him they would only speak they would only peek outside of windows, staying out of sight and trying hard to avoid him. Mrs. Carpels Peel, Mayor Ryan, and Sheriff Albedo held a meeting to try to figure out how they could free Orange Peel. He had been out in the hot sun all day and they all had to save him quickly. They decided to wait until nightfall to free him. As soon as they noticed the blacksmith shop candlelight was put out, indicating Big Red was asleep, they ran over to Orange Peel, freed him, and ran to their homes to sleep for the night. The following morning, while they were having breakfast at the bakery, Mrs. Mr. Peel told them that they had to try to figure out another way to, to uh, deal with Big Red. Orange Peel had a very bad sunburn and had been uh, tied to the sun post in the hot sun and was very sore. Sheriff Albedo told, told them to just be patient and maybe his attitude would change over time.
The whole town did all they could to avoid Big Red. After three days had passed without anyone having seen Big Red, they started to wonder if he had left town or not. Mayor Ryan asked Mrs. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Carpell's Peel to go to the black shop and see if Big Red was there. On the side of the blacksmith shop was a door that led inside Big Red's home. She noticed that the door was open and looked around and realized that Big Red was not in his home. She then peeked inside the blacksmith shop door and he was not there either. Miss Carpell's Peel was so excited, she ran back to the others who were watching from a distance and told them that Big Red was gone. Mayor Ryan said that it called for a celebration. Sheriff Albedo told them that they should all have a hootenanny that night. Hootenanny was a country word for party. They jumped for joy and made preparations for a grand party that they would celebrate in the streets that evening. Orange Peel and his wife, Mrs. Carpels Peel, prepared a large feast of food. Mayor Ryan dusted off his old violin and Sheriff Albedo prepared a picnic table and decorations. And as evening came, they all had a wonderful dinner of, of all kinds of delicious food. After dinner, Mayor Ryan took his old dusty violin and began to play music for everyone. As the, as the square dancing, and the, as they square danced with great joy, celebrating the, the Big Red had left town. The Hootenanny lasted late into the night. Little did they know, however, was the fact that Big Red never really left town. He fell into the old, an old well near the blacksmith shop, blacksmith shop and could hear the faint sounds of violins playing as they were celebrating. He shouted for help, but the well was too deep and they could not hear him. Big Red was scared, fearful, hungry, thirsty, as he had as he had been in the well now for three full days. The following morning, Sheriff Albedo was walking around near the blacksmith shop property and was standing near the old abandoned well when he heard a faint cry for help. He looked around, not seeing anyone, when he realized the sound was coming from inside the old well. Sheriff Albedo, Albedo shouted down to the well, and Big Red cried for help. Sheriff Albedo shouted back down to the well, telling Big Red that he finally got what he deserved. Big Red began to cry even louder for help. Sheriff Albedo went and gathered the others telling them what had happened. Mayor Ryan shouted out that it was a good friend to stay in the well because he was so mean. Mrs. Carpels Peels told them he had, they had to help him because he was in the well now for four days and, and could die from thirst and hunger. They all agreed to help free Big Red and they gathered by the well with a long rope and lowered it down to the well and they secured the rope and then secured the rope to Big Red so he could climb out. As soon as Big Red was free from the well he immediately started to cry. He was crying because he he had he was so scared that they were going to leave him in the well and because he was so happy that they saved him. Mr. Peel 
ran to fetch up some water for Big Red, who drank it quickly. Big Red, with tears in his eyes, gave thanks to everyone for sa saving him from the well. He also apologized the way he had treated everybody from that moment, and, and from that moment on, he would only be nice to oranges and would no longer be mean to them. What did Big Red learn from being trapped in the well? He learned never to go too close to old wells, and if you ever want any help from anyone, then it's better to be nice to others rather than to be mean to others. The End